the hearing center. We are now going to look into the elements of our auditory system. The sound waves entering our ears are collected in the area represented by the letter A. Pass through B and trigger the mechanical system between C and E. After E, the mechanical energy reaches the purple area and causes the liquid contained in it to move. The result is an electrical impulse. These signals are transmitted through the red tapes at the very right to a computer. The sounds are processed in this computer and this process results in hearing. This computer is actually the hearing center in our brain. The hearing center in the brain is the part that interprets the signals coming from the inner ear and makes hearing possible. Most interestingly, this place where all sounds are processed is actually very quiet. The hearing center in our brain is still a source of mystery, but does a most miraculous job. The information related to hearing is transmitted to this hearing center to the acoustic nerve 2.5 centimeters long. The hearing center. When the brain receives a signal, it compares it to some 400,000 different sounds we have heard before in our lives, thus preparing the body for its next reaction. If the brain didn't do that, we would be unable to hear a car coming from behind and jump out of the way in time. Another quality of the hearing center is its capability to filter sounds. When we are in an enclosed place, we still can hear everything perfectly. despite the different sounds coming from different parts of the room, such as the radio or TV. We would not normally be able to do that because the sound waves strike the objects in this and this should create an echo. In other words, we would normally hear not only the original sound, but its echo as well. On top of that, there is another point that would normally increase the echo effect our own heads. Because sound waves strike our heads first and then reach the hearing center, and this should increase the echo effect, but that never happens, because all echoes other than the sounds we are supposed to perceive are eliminated in the brainstem. Eric Young, director of the John Hopkins Center for Hearing Sciences, explains. Our cells in the brainstem are ready to locate the sound. This way, they analyze hundreds of sounds with different tones and characters. The sounds are differentiated with no special effort. For example, you can tell a bagpipe from footsteps. Auditory signals also get sharper because the clever brainstem deletes a clutter of echoes, so they never reach awareness. As your friend's voice and piano playing bounce off the walls, fireplace and ceiling, a processing center picks out the echoes as duplicates because they arrive a tad later. It deletes all but the original signal, a neat trick given the complexity of the sound. Then how can we hear some echoes and not others, despite this amazing selective quality of the brainstem? 
Surely, if the distance involved is very large, for example, if we are in a valley or in an empty room, high volumes will create echoes because they reach us seconds later than the original sound. In this case, they are not eliminated by our brains and are perceived as a different sound. But in the meantime, the brain has already completed the evaluation of the first sound, so there is no longer any possibility of the echo becoming mixed up with the original sound and causing confusion. Sound travels to the air at a specific speed, just like water ripples. And our auditory system is perfectly created to benefit from this feature of sounds. The distance between our ears is around 20 centimeters. Therefore, a sound reaching one side of the head reaches the other ear with a delay of three five thousandths of a second. Some cells in our brain immediately perceive this small difference and accurately detect the direction of the sound. But if the distance between the sound waves is shorter than the distance between our ears, then this method will not work. But despite that, we can still hear this type of sound waves and locate the direction they come from. But how? The sound sensor achieves this by creating a shadow of the sound. Let us examine this with an example. When light is projected onto one side of our heads, the shadow of our heads forms on the other side. In the same way, when a sound arrives from the side, there will be a sound shadow with a lower sound intensity. Although the sound reaches both ears at almost the same time, very sensitive cells use a difference in the sound's intensities to detect the direction the sound is coming from. The hearing center does all these things by analyzing the electrical impulses it receives. But how do the sound waves in the air turn into electrical impulses? Here we see other miraculous qualities of this amazing work of engineering.